at the Tennessee um, State Board of Education. We are here to talk about our concerns as it relates to special education in the great state of Tennessee. Um, if we haven't met, I'm Karen Mayor Cunningham, special education boss, training um, everyone that sits at the 504 IEP table for successful student outcomes. We have advocates that work for us all over the nation and the, the calls we get out of this state are egregious and it's not a COVID issue. It's not an online issue. Um, it's not a teacher shortage issue. It's a choice. Um, and the people at the state education agency are very aware of that. Uh, the people at administrations and districts are very aware of that. And we're here to bring um, um, life to it and language to it so that teachers are supported. At the end of the day, this is about kind of two people, right? The teachers and the service providers and the aides and the students with the disabilities. The bulk of the calls that we get are from teachers. And so the first problem is we don't support our teachers, right? We have great teachers that come to staff and they say, hey, there's there's a problem with Sally. There's a problem with Joe. There's a problem with Billy. And they're told by the principals, you're doing a great job. Just go back to your room, right? And so we, are, we have a country, a state of illiterate adults because we don't intervene for special education. It's not a priority to us. It's very much a priority in school districts for other things like paying the admin at the district level, 85% of the total school budget, that's a priority. Building coliseums, which are football stadiums, that we have seven home games, that, that's a priority. But we don't make kids learning to read, do math, and write a priority. And it's unacceptable, and we're not gonna let it go anymore. We're gonna give a language to it. So the first violation that shows up in Tennessee is a violation of child fine. It's a federal requirement, I don't know, for the last 47 years since 1975 that the school district not the parent that the school district has a legal federal obligation it's called child fine that we identify that we locate and we evaluate children with suspected disabilities notice i didn't say confirmed disabilities notice i didn't say that parents come to the school and they beg for you to give them intervention and they plead with you and you send them away or worse you tell them in tennessee we're going to keep an eye on your kid we're not interested in you keeping an eye on our kids. We're interested in you in educating them. And when they rise to the level of needing another intervention besides general ed, you have a legal obligation under 504 as a civil right and a federal obligation, which you are funded for under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act to provide them that education. And so teachers um, can't refer. Teachers in Tennessee, we can't refer. The teachers have to give the parents an and go, listen, um, your child needs help, but I, I can't say anything, I'll get in trouble. And the teachers who actually come to the parents and they say there's an area of need, when we get to the meetings, the teachers can't say anything. You know why? Because they've been hushed by their, don't, don't say anything, don't say anything. You know how we know this? Because two thirds of the people that train with us nationally are school-based members who are looking for a way to serve kiddos in education, which is the reason they went to school. And this behavior is part of the mass exodus. It's not attorneys, it's not parents, certainly not advocates, but admin knows what they're doing even though they're funded to provide special education. Um, so we have children that are illiterate and can't read and we, in kindergarten we say there's a need, in first grade and second grade, uh, we're gonna keep an eye on them, keep an eye on them. And by fourth grade, it's too late. You know why? Because that student has already taught themselves strategies to self-manage their disability that you can't unteach. And we knew there was a problem. Or worse, the most egregious thing that we do here in the great state of Tennessee is we say, oh, you cannot have an evaluation. Absolutely not. You're not gonna have an evaluation for special education. We have to, say it with me, we have to do RTI first. That's funny, because that's a federal violation. If you look at the OSEP letters, the Office of Special Education Programs, a federal entity, there's a little letter in January 22, 2011, which says a guideline to the United States of America RTI is never a reason to stop testing. And I have kids that I serve that is so sad that when I get them, they've been in RTI for years. Five days a week, they've been in RTI. So what you've done is you've made the general ed teacher be the special education teacher in the room because you won't do your baseline obligation and provide a full individualized evaluation. Um, we delay evaluations, right? We, a parent wants an evaluation, sure, 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 we delay them. Just give us a few more weeks. The lady that does that is out. Oh, you can't have that evaluation right now. You have to prove why you get that. You've got to prove it. Because I've read the law, it doesn't say you have to prove
improve anything. We educate, we assess and evaluate students with suspected disabilities in need of special education and related services. If you can prove it, no, it doesn't say that. Or better, we sit in meetings with um, the IEP leadership and they tell us that we have to justify our meetings. We don't have to justify anything. The student is in need of special education and related services and these evaluations will identify or eliminate if there is a need. Parents don't know that they have a voice. Parents don't know that they have procedural safeguards, federal and state rights. We just slide that little piece of paper over and say sign for this. We never explain to the parent their procedural rights ever, do we? No, and they have them and their rights are being violated every day in the state of Tennessee. Now in Tennessee, we've got this great new thing going on. Now listen in mom and dad, your kid has been sent to a learning lab, right? That's the new thing in Tennessee. We send kids to learning labs. That is a joke and it's inappropriate and it's offensive. We have one special education teacher. We send in all grade levels and we just shove them into one room so that we get out of our obligation of pushing special education services or pull out special education services. <laughs> And we more just since COVID, no. And people do know. And parents and teachers and families are not going to tolerate this. There is plenty of funding in this state, Department of Education. There's plenty of federal funding. There's plenty of state funding. There's plenty of grant money that you could write for. But patting yourself on the back for letting some seventh grader have an evaluation for dyslexia is unacceptable. And how do parents know if their IEP is being implemented? They ask me that all the time. This is what you need to do, mom and dad and guardians and grandparents. You need to ask for RDCS. RDCS, raw data collection sheets. At the end of every grading period, I'm gonna notify the school that I will be picking up the raw data collection sheets. What are those? Those are data that you collected on IEP goals. It's your federal obligation and state obligation and sheets of accommodations. Both of those have to be filled out by teachers. All of your accommodation sheets have to be filled out. That's a civil right. If they're not, I would file a violation with the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. And you have to collect data on IEP goals. At the very bottom of your IEP goals, there's a little phrase down there that says implementer. That is the person that's legally responsible for implementing the goal, working on it, delivering that specially designed instruction, and collecting data. So I want you to email the school and say, hey, I just want you to know, at the end of the grading period, I will be picking up my students' raw data collection sheets. Additionally, this not letting parents see their kids' work is baloney. Like, you're, you're kidding, right? It's their procedural right, any parent at a child in school, that they can see their child's educational problem. Oh, we can't send that home. We can't send that home. Of course you can send it home. How am I gonna know what he needs to work on, a tutor or anything else? So please don't fall for that, right? Stop picking up the telephone. Stop picking up the telephone. Have you noticed this like rise of phone calls? Come pick up your kid, come pick up your kid, come pick up your kid, he's not behaving. Yeah. Good, before you pick up your kid, make sure that they're going to write him up and say that they can't provide him an educational benefit. It's the school's obligation, duty and responsibility to educate your child in any educational area functionally, behaviorally, emotionally, socially, academically, language, communicative, and all related services. Stop picking up your child. What you're doing is two things. You're teaching learned dependency, and then you've recused the school of their obligation to teach your child. If what your child needs is not available on their campus, it's available at another campus. If it's not available on another campus, there's a thing called out of district day placement and every school district in America has it. It's called a continuum of services. Whether your child is in juvenile, a hospital, at home, a psychiatric unit, or on the district property, unless you've unenrolled them, this state has a legal obligation to provide your student special education and related services that are in their IEP. Stop agreeing to this ridiculous, ridiculous remote learning plan. It's not a thing. It is not a thing. It's not codified at the federal level, certainly not codified at the state level. We don't plan an IEP for something that may never happen. That's ridiculous.